Hey, my name's Maddie. You might recognize me from this video that I also made about a year ago. When I made that, I was just vlogging the process of making my floor. I wasn't really doing it so that people could duplicate exactly what I was going to do. I was just saying, hey, this worked for me, maybe throw out some ideas. But now that video is my second most watched video ever. And I'm thinking some of the people that are watching it aren't really interested in the process behind it. They just want to know the facts. So today I thought I'd sit down and make this video where I'll break down how I make my floor in a step-by-step -step process. I won't make any jokes at all. Step one, get the floor as flat as you can. So this is what my car looked like when we first bought it. The sales lady at the dealership, well, I told her what I was doing and she said, oh, do you just want us to take them out for you? And I was like, sure, go ahead. And my dad said that wasn't a good move because we could have got some money for them. However, I am in several Facebook groups about living in cars and vans and I have never heard of anyone being successfully able to sell them. Most of the time, I think people just put them in the junkyard. Now, at least I know in my 2011 XLE Sienna, there were two rails left behind because of where the middle seats were. Now, to get rid of those, if you step or push down on one side of them, you can use a hammer or mallet to scooch them along. The one that's behind the driver's seat is just able to slide right out towards the trunk, but the one behind the passenger seat, there is a squarish metal ring in the way of it sliding out that way. We tried to remove the passenger seat and slide it forward. That didn't work either. Finally, my dad knew someone with a tool that looked like a saw, but it was electric and it was able to cut through the metal to cut that metal ring out. Now, if you can't get your hands on this tool, and sorry, I don't know what it's really called, but if you can't find one, I think you're gonna have to build your floor up just a little bit more. Make it taller, which means less headspace, but maybe you could repurpose that as a storage space for flat things that can just slide under. Moving on to our next step, get the exact shape of the floor. And you do this through a process called cardboard templates. Now this is my friend Marshall. Please go check out his channel, Mellow Nomadic Adventures. He was the one that showed me this process. Basically, you are just getting the cardboard to sit as close to the edges of your van as possible. If you cut the curve too deep, you can place another piece on top and tape it down and try again. The point of doing this is to know the exact shape you want your floor to be because my floor isn't screwed into my van itself at any point. It's just the snugness of how well it fits that's holding it in there. Also, I wanted to mention I got all this cardboard because I worked at a factory at the time and I just took it home from work. But I've heard if you go to a restaurant or a grocery store, explain what you're doing and ask, sometimes they just have a bunch of cardboard laying around that they'll give you for free. Now you're ready for step three, cutting the plywood. I used two sheets of plywood. They were about an inch thick each and they were about $50. And you use those cardboard templates to cut out the exact shape that you want. Make sure you have a saw that can cut good curves. Once that part is done, what I would do is set it in there, set it in your van, and start to plan out with masking tape the rest of your build. Once you know exactly where you're going to put everything, that's when you can start to plan the pieces of your floor that are going to lift up so you can access your storage space where the third row seats used to fold into the trunk. I'm going to call these pieces of wood trapdoors, and you can either have the kind that you just pick up or a kind that folds back on hinges. I have both. Once you have that planned, you can go ahead and cut it out. Step four sand and stain the plywood. Now if you're in a super hurry you could skip this step but having a stain on it makes it more durable and it looks really good too. This is what I used. 
Make sure you pick out a kind that is for a deck or something, just because it's probably going to, you know, get some rain on it. You might spill something on it. You really want something durable. Step five is to build a structure to support the floor above the trunk. Now, this is what mine looks like, a drawing of it. I think we used two or three two by fours and just built something semi-rectangular. I'll show you a view of it from another side. Now, the longer side that goes right by the opening of the trunk, that actually leans forward a little. It's not a 90 degree angle to the floor. As you can see in this video, you can see that board leaning. Here's more video just to give you a better idea. Why my shorter side only goes halfway is so that the opening of my longer trap door would be completely open. I have a cross support built into the plywood stained floor part that holds one of the ends up. And you'll see the other end is supported by the frame as usual. The process of building this frame into my van looked like this. I forgot to mention earlier that steps four and five that I've written out here are interchangeable. Doesn't matter if you stain or build a platform first. Alrighty, now it's time for step six, finish the floor surface. First, you wanna put in all your pieces, like I did in this fun little time-lapse video. I did leave my carpet in there for insulation, and I wish I would have added some actual foam insulation or something because my floor does get cold at night. Next, we attach the two pieces of plywood by putting some scrap wood underneath and then drilling down into it from both pieces of wood. Here's a view from underneath the floor, but please don't use cardboard like I did because apparently that can mold. Next, you'll also want to add a few pieces of 2x4 or scrap wood as short legs underneath the front part of the floor so that when you move across it, it doesn't rock back and forth. Because I wanted as much headspace as possible, my floor does slant forward towards the front of the van in relation to the ground. Pretend like this part of the picture has been there the whole time, okay? But I evened it out by making my furniture parallel to the ground just by adding extra long legs on one side. Here it is with my bed. And honestly, I forgot all about it till making this video. I don't notice it. Step seven, finish the trap doors. You can see I have an inch thick piece of wood, but if you knelt on it or stood on it the wrong way, it would snap, which did happen in um, while I was still building it. So we added these metal supports with some short screws in there. And now I've never had a problem with this snapping or looking like it was about to snap. We also put these supports on here to keep this piece steady. After you put the metal strips on them, you're going to want to have some kind of handle to help you lift up. I used these two leather pieces I found at a craft store. I think they look really cool. Plus, if I am sitting on here, I don't even notice that they're there. I just attach them with a staple gun. This one like this. You can see at one point I had a thinner leather strap to help pick it up from the middle, but that broke and I haven't needed to replace it, so you really don't have to do something like that. Now here are my lovely hinges I have on here. I got them in black to match the leather. You can tell over here that I had to move this one over because I didn't realize the leg of my bed would go there, so be careful on that. But I just got two of them. They're gate hinges, so they're really strong, and I've had no problem with them. Easy peasy. Step eight, finish the gaps by the sliding doors, if you want to. What I did is take stick-on floor tile and stick it to the edge of the plywood and then put this stair step over it. It was just slightly too short, so I have this piece of cloth that seemed like a really similar color that's kind of trying to blend it in a little bit. This is how it looks without my rug. 
here on the other side, the burlap I use kind of as a bed skirt is covering the gap between the floor of the van and the floor that I built. I have lots of under the bed storage as you can see. Plus I have this space that's a few inches that I use to store books. Now I wish I had painted this edge of the plywood just because it doesn't look that good now, but I'm really the only person that sees it, so it only bothers me a little. Okay, everything I just said probably was a lot, all at once. So I made this list of tools and supplies. Um, hopefully it's helpful. Sorry, I don't know the names of things. I'm not really a professional builder. Also, I wanted to tell you that this build cost me about $450. But remember, I paid Marshall from Mellow Nomadic Adventures for his time. And I didn't buy any power tools. I just borrowed them. So might be a little different for you. This is about how long I think it would take you. Please notice that it does say estimated because it's just a guess. For me, it took about a month maybe. I was starting from scratch. Hopefully if you follow these steps, it'll take you shorter. And if you really, really know what you're doing, it might even take you shorter than this. So there you have it. That's how I built my floor. It's my favorite part of my van and probably one of the best ideas I ever had. If you have questions, I try to answer every comment I get, so please ask away. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.